show and the reason for that is many people have contacted me even regarding the show uh, today's show is about scams and, and I fall victim too of a lot of shows and of victims of a lot of scams and let me tell you a few you know everybody is I'm not exempt either when it comes to scams I like to I do report them but I have what is called a blocker a blocker on my, my phone. Now, what's a blocker? A blocker is if somebody calls and it's a scam or they don't answer, what, what I do is I push the block button. And when I push the block button, now I don't even answer my private line anymore. What I do is I push the block button. And if they call back, if the same number calls back one time, it goes to nothing. They hear nothing. And, and that's interesting, too, because it's a block. Then, my other scam that I got, as I said, I'm not exempt, I'm not exempt, this is what I'm going to tell you all the scams that I do, I'm aware of. If somebody contacts me and on my caller ID as my bank, an example. Now, my bank, naturally, I think it's my bank, and you would think it's your bank. And if you think it's your bank, then what you do, which I did too, I didn't give them any information, no answers, I'm glad I didn't. Because I contacted, they said, well, we want information to verify certain things. Well, you know what? No way. I'm not going to give anybody information to verify anything. So what I did, I contacted my bank. And because on the caller ID, it said my bank, and it was the bank's number. I mean, this is how good they're getting. This is how the, good the scams are getting. So I went over to my bank and I said, did you call me? And they said, no, we didn't. I said, well, look at this. And they said, well, at least you didn't give them any information. But it's not the point. Suppose I did because they asked me questions. Suppose they would have said, what, Pearl, we have a, a different social security number, different, can you give us the right one? A lot of people would fall for that. Or a lot of people, when they pay their bills, a lot of people, when they pay their bills, they, they want information. So they're going to answer the people that's calling them. But if, if you get a call from your bank, your bank's not going to call you. You wait till you go in there to see them. If you get a call from the IRS office, from the Social Security office, you have to, don't give them any information. And I'm finding out the do's and don'ts of what to do and, and the scary part about the scams with it. You know, you have to use your wisdom. You have to use your wisdom of what to do <coughs> and what not to do. You, the, the, the one scam that I am aware of, as you know, is a big scam, and that's bill collectors. Yes, it's a bill collector letter. They're going to tell you everything, everything and anything, anything and everything to try to disguise you, to make you pay them. Some people do. That's why they're still in business. You know, I always wondered why a lot of bill collectors were, they weren't out of business. They're in business because you're the one that's paying them. I always used to say this, but now that the scams are out there, Scams are a dime a dozen, and I'm going to tell you so many of them to avoid or what not to do. And if you, have, if you forget it, please listen to this tape over again and over again. Because some of, these, some of these you will get scammed and it could cost you. I decided to do this show for two reasons. Number one, one of the people that got scammed, she committed suicide. She committed suicide because she thought it was her bank calling her. And as her bank called her, she gave out all the information and she got, she got taken over. She got taken over thousands of dollars. And she didn't know it. She committed suicide. Another thing with doctors, an example. Many scams out there, I mean the bill collectors were number one. But the many of them were, were doctors. Five doctors. Now there's two areas. Two areas. One is from the Mission area, Mission, the state of Michigan. Now, what, what about the state of Michigan? Well, the state of Michigan was opened up an office, claimed he was a doctor. Not only claimed he was a doctor, said he cured cancer. Not only that, but the line was like going out of his office, out of his office to the outside. Somebody got suspicious and somebody reported 
Well, it was interesting because what she said is she got right back into her car, started sobbing. The woman started sobbing, and the first instinct was to run into the office and tell all the patients who need to get out of here. He's a ripoff. But she did report him, and he is now in jail. He's now in jail. Why he's in jail? He was charging people $1,500 for everybody that went into his office. Pretty sad, and that's Michigan. And then I found out there's more than one of those doctors. There's more than one of those doctors. There's five five doctors in my area, in the Pennsylvania area. And these doctors in the Pennsylvania area, what they were doing was they canceled all their, their patients. They canceled all their patients' appointments. And all they were taking was the drug addict, addiction patients. So their line was out the door as well. Now, he was a, a regular doctor. But he canceled all of his regular appointments, and what he was doing was he was giving it to only drug-addicted people, and he made a lot of money out of it. He made a lot of money out of it, but guess what? They always get caught. He's, he's in jail right now. And this is in my area. It was in the newspaper. It was pretty interesting. Another one that was sent to jail was, and she pleaded guilty. She had to plead guilty because they did a, a plea bargain on her. And that was in the Jersey, New Jersey area. So they're all over the New Jersey area. She defrauded immigrants. She told immigrants, well, first she told them she was an attorney. And then after telling them she was an attorney, she said, you know, I could get you your house, your apartment. I can get you anything you want. But they had to pay a price too. And they paid a high price and they wanted to pay her because they wanted to, they had an American, they assumed that would get her what they wanted. Well, when you when you it gets when you start charging people and you can't stop charging them over and over again, somebody's gonna be wise. Somebody's gonna be wise to say, something's wrong with this picture. And they did. So she pleaded guilty. And she pleaded guilty to defraud defrauding the immigrants from all over. And that was in the newspaper. That was in the newspaper. That's how I got that. I said the show was meant to be with that. So a lot of these things, the warning signs were there. And, okay, let's go to the phones now. Let's go to the phone lines with it. Suppose, suppose you get, suppose you get a call on your car ID. Now you have car ID. And it starts with the number 377. And some of them are 375. But look at your car ID now. And they only ring one time. They're only going to ring you one time and then they're going to stop ringing and you're going to say, I wonder who that was. So what do you do? And they expect you to do it. You call them back. You call them back, but don't call them back. I'm going to say don't call them back, but here's what happens. You call them back, and they know you're going to call back. Because calling them back, now they have access to the contacts, to the tricks to the access your SM card, your contacts on your phone. And boy, do they have all the contacts with you. And they can do it over and over again, and they will. So remember the number 377 or 375, or any number that just rings one time, and expect you to call back. Now what happens when you when they they say push one, push two, push three, push four, push five? You hear that too, but you're not sure who they are. If you push any number, any number that gives them access that they have a true phone number, and they're gonna call you over and over again because you just gave them the access by saying, I pushed button five, that tells me you dial the right number. You dialed my number, so it's right. Isn't it horrible? Isn't it horrible that we have to go through this? We didn't go through this years ago, and we're going through this now. And, and our, the president, as of a couple weeks ago, he signed a contract. He signed a new bill. He signed a new bill, and that was for the phone. Well, guess what? It's not working. I'm still getting the calls. And I did report them. I reported them when I was at 100. Now I'm at 160 some. But as they said to me, a lot of them are from out of the country. A lot of them are from out of the country, and there's a lot of scams going on that they can't stop. And they can't stop it because it's from overseas. Pretty, this is scary. Pretty scary. So, But all you have to do is to be wise. Be wise to the people that are calling. The warning signs, like the example here. You're going to receive automatic calls from a company that is not giving you consent to contact them. A pre-recorded message goes on. Press 1, which I just spoke about. Do not press 1. Hang up. Hang up. 
I know it sounds hard because you may think it's a family member or a neighbor or whatever, but it's a scam. It's a scam that's going on out there. We also have the one pe one person that, that knew we were having a scam show. She wrote me a letter. She wrote me a letter and she asked me to put it on the air. I read it and I did. And I am. She puts, Dear Miss Polto, thank you for doing a show on scams. Let me tell you what happened to me. Please let the people be aware of this. Finding, an, oh, finding a boyfriend ending on the internet. He was the greatest. He gives me gifts, what you want. He helps me and thinks that you, and you think you are loved by him. He talks what are the signs. He gives you another name, not his. He's married and already he was thinking of sex, money, and he wants to see your home. He wants to see what he can take from you, but you didn't know. It. And so do your homework. Do your homework just because you meet him. Now, even, even though he does, he was even, as she puts, even does her chores. Can you imagine? He deposited, he even deposits money for me at the bank. Like he figures, she figures he's doing her a favor. And then she found out he took $5,000 from her account without even telling her. And this was a lesson, she said. This was a lesson for me. And to please tell others. Thank you, Jean. Jean, if you're listening out there, you, you're at 5000 Now, I will answer you as a paralegal, as a consumer advocate. No, you cannot get that money back because you gave him permission. You gave him permission to do it. When you give somebody permission at your bank or whoever you meet to do things, they can say, hey, we didn't tell you to do this. You should have been smarter than this. But how are they supposed to know? How are they supposed to know? Or if you get a, a pre, if you pick up the phone, you have pre-recorded voice, and this lets you know this is a scam. This is a scam. There's many scams out there, but this is a scam as well. Then there's the job scam. Now, what's the job scam? Some people between jobs, there's nothing funny but being unemployed. And the job scam is actually, you know, you, you want a job so bad, and you, you let them know. Avoid, first of all, avoid, 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 <clears throat> avoid answering their emails or their calls. And the reason for that is, now how many remember that there? There was many, many emails that, that you used to get. They used to get uh, scams on the emails, and they used to get it all over the fact. They used to delete, 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 delete. Well, now they're making it more tempting. Now they're saying, you won. I get them too. You won. You won this. Or you applied for this, and we're going to give this to you. So you open it up. Just because you opened it up, you became viable to their big thing. They're finding out everything about you. Don't do it. If you don't recognize it, delete, 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 delete. And these are the do's. Now, I wrote things down. Now, the other thing was if you owed money. <clears throat> Suppose everybody has automatic payments and they pay on time, their checks, their whatever, the credit cards, when they receive a letter in the mail saying urgent payment requested. <laughs> well, you don't know. You don't know because you think you're paying your bills every month and you're paying them on time. But maybe you skipped the month. Maybe you didn't get the bill. And you really don't know. And they're naming the right company. So they say to you, you didn't pay. You didn't pay your gas bill. You didn't pay your gas bill. You're going to have to mail a check to ABC company at this address. And this is how much you owe on back. Last month and this month. Well, people do it. They are doing it. Can they get it back? No. You lost out. They're too embarrassed to tell anybody. But you lost out. So the next time somebody says that to you, here's what you say to them. Put it in writing. Put it in writing to me. And if I owe something that I forgot to pay, put it in writing. And then I'll look at it and I will mail you a check. I will mail you a check. Don't don't call me telling me or don't email me telling you because you could be a, a fraud and let them know they could be a fraud. Let them know it because let them know you're on top of the game with it. Uh, when it comes to even you owe somebody. So you receive a letter in the mail saying urgent payment requested. No, no. You know what you paid. And if you don't know what you paid, you know, you're not going to forget that much. You're not going to forget it. But if they just say to you, and they could, send us a check for $72.89. Well, that sounds pretty real, doesn't it? Because it's, it's right to the penny. And they think they do owe it. 
But the last thing you want is somebody on your tail and somebody knocking on your door. And they will knock on your door, you think. They think you're going to harass them. And you know what? They're not going to harass you because it was a phony. If you pay it, here's what they do. They, are, they not only got your check, but they got the information from your bank just by that check. And then they try. They try to get that information that you gave them and try to withdraw from your bank account. This is why this one woman did commit suicide. Pretty sad, pretty sad. And no one warned her, no one told her. And, but they took a lot of money out, thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Look at the 18-year-old that was on the news. 18-year-old uh, was on the news. He took $18 million from people saying that this is what they owed. He said they were from every department possible. We're from the IRS, we're from the legal department, we're from the insurance department. Here's what we're from. And, and they, all, they all fell for it. They all fell for it. And they're falling for it because they're scared. People are afraid today. They're afraid to open up their mouth. They're afraid to say, I'm not going to go with this. I'm not going to go with this. I don't care what you say. I'm not afraid of you. Hang up. If you don't want to talk to them, hang up the phone. Because it's, it's even smart things that people are doing. I picked up something that says the five scams that are even fooling the smartest victims. And these are pretty, these are pretty sad, pretty sad, because many people laugh when they hear me talk about these scams. They laugh a bit. And they see an email from an, a stranger, and they think, well, this is, this is, this is them. This is them. They know all about them. They know all about them. Well, you know, learn more about it, but not all. They're, they're half of them, half of the spammers get their signatures every day every day and they get it through the email personal data well phrased letters and actual corporate log logos they, even corporate they have a big corporate thing on here that you're reading the same as con artists it works coaxing people out of their money they never even met the person now many of you i am sure i am sure many of you not many but watch the uh, dr phil show when they talked about the people uh, woman uh, meeting guys on the internet and, and they would give them thousands, seventy thousands of dollars and you would sit there and you're saying, how could they do this? How could they do this? Well, you could be doing it. These women, I wrote to Dr. Phil, I said, these women have to be pretty desperate, pretty desperate to find a boyfriend or to have somebody because they're lonely that they're going to pay because the guy does everything for them. They never met the guy now. Remember, they never met the guy. Imagine if they met him, like the one person I said at the beginning. Well, if you didn't meet him, and he's going on and on and on and treating you really nice and nice and nicey nicey, and then asks you for money. Then asks you for money. And what do you do? You give it to him. Because you figure one day I'll beat him. We'll, we'll get married one day, this, 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 and this. But it never happens. It never happens because you got a duplicate of your checking account. you got a duplicate of everything. I was talking to a client, as far as that goes, giving unknown people money and she said uh, that happened to her she said she, she dated a guy for nine months and he did everything for her he said but then all of a sudden he asked her for seven hundred dollars and she said no way I said what did he ask you seven hundred dollars for and she said because he said he needed it for this and he's good for it he will pay me back as soon as he gets his checks from so-and-so ABC company well she still said no he ditched her and did away with it. He never did get the 700, thank God. And I said to her, thank God. But she said, Pearl, it does happen. People believe people. And they believe them for the, the, the strangest reason. And I was looking at, I wanted to see what the, what the 10 scams were in this country and what to do, what not to do. This is what I found. What to do. Do hang up immediately unless you have a reason to think that you actually owe even taxes. Don't forward any unsolicited emails when somebody claims to be from the IRS, Treasury Department, or whatever. Do not click on their site either because that opens it up where they know all about you. Or do you consider filing a fraud alert, freezing your account? Well, this is what they do. Don't ask for I don't ask for identification if they're visiting someone claiming from the IRS. Actual employees carry two credentials pocket knock on the door or by mail they're not going to do this by regular uh what you're saying 
An IRS employee will provide a request, a phone number, for you to verify the information. And let me tell you, this is interesting too, because you think, well, when you say to the person, hang up, let me call you back, it doesn't work. Because when you call, let's say you got it from Wells Fargo Bank, somebody called you from Wells Fargo. And you hang up and you're going to say, I'm going to call you back to see if it's you. And he says, well, go ahead and I'll call you back in five minutes. Well, you hang up the phone, you call up the, the number on the caller ID, and it says, Wells Fargo. Well, then you say, well, it's got to be for real. This is Wells Fargo. No, this is what he told you it was from. He got it legitly from the bank, their number. And then he calls you back in five minutes and say, now, can you give me the information I wanted to? You're wasting my time. You give him the information, and you're out of thousands of dollars with it. Here's what you don't do. Don't provide any personal information who claims they're from a government official. Don't respond to a person from the IRS emails or text anything because the IRS doesn't do that. Don't agree to pay tax bills with a pre-debit card or wire. Don't give out any credit cards on the air because don't be bullied. A scammer will issue threats according to the IRS. They'll actually owe, that you owe back taxes and you really don't owe back taxes. But they convinced you, didn't they? And it's not just you. You would say, well, I'm not that stupid. I am not that stupid. Well, you know what? I hate to say it, people, but you are stupid. And I'm not putting it down because I'm one of those victims, too. They did it to, they did it to me when it came to, like I said, I'm on a blocker phone. I'm on a blocker phone. What they were saying, it, it, it made sense. It made sense. So-and-so told me to call you, so-and-so. And they would get the names. They would know everything, everything about you. And the only thing you have to do, the only thing you have to do is mail them money. Now, you go on your Internet, and the other big scam is, and I hate to say this, is your sites on the Internet where you buy things. Well, how many times do people buy things and they never get them? Well, I, I, because I did this show, I wanted to put a lot of things to the test. And I did. <laughs> Boy, did I do it. I lost money, but that's okay because I haven't reported I ordered something, but I really didn't order it. But they say I ordered it, and they mailed it to me. When I ma they mailed it to me, this was the interesting part. There was no invoice, just what they say I ordered. And it was something that I would have ordered, but it wasn't, I did not order it. And it was, it was no invoice. So what I did, I wrote a letter with a copy of it, and actually going to whoever it has to go, to the, the Better Business Bureau all the way around, and I sent it back to them. I said, refund my money now, or you will be reported. Well, you know what? They don't care if they're reported because they already got the money. They already got the money. But then I had to, I had to tell my, my bank, you know, I don't use anything by checks. I try to use everything by credit cards. And I'll tell you why I try to do everything by credit cards. Because credit card companies are wise to it. That surprised me. Credit card companies are wise to it. I received a, uh, a call one day, and they said they were from a credit card company. I said, really? Well, somebody tried to use your credit card. I said, really? Who were you? I said, put it in writing to me. Put it in writing, because I don't believe you. I don't trust you. I don't know who you are. And let me introduce myself. And I did. But the next day, a new credit card came in, and the other one was closed. And I thought, this is interesting. So I did call up that credit card company, and I said, somebody called me. Here's his name. I said, you told me that somebody was using my credit card. And I'm finding out it was legit. I said, I have to thank you people. I have to thank you for doing this because you didn't have to. Would I have known? No, I wouldn't have known who used my credit card. Because, you know, people don't. I mean, they go out and they buy things, but they don't remember what they bought. and They just pay it when the bill comes in. And this is what happened. So the credit card companies are, or believe it or not, they're for your behalf as well. They're trying to do things for you. The other thing a consumer let me know, and I didn't know about this, so thank you to the consumers out there, I want to thank you for letting me know some of the scams I did not know. They said, don't go up an escalator, you're listening, don't go up an escalator or close to a person going up an escalator or even an elevator. I said, why? Because as you're going up to the escalator, you're going up. And somebody's coming down. Well, they're getting close enough to you to say, hi, how are you? How was your day? But as they're saying, how are you? How was your day? 
they have a phone to scan your wallet and they do scan it and you don't even know it <clears throat> you don't even know it because when they leave it they're that they, you just you just lost you just lost a pile of money because they call up your credit card company they call up if you have a check in there you're done you're done because they will get that money any way they can if you're on an elevator and there's somebody close to you put the put your pocketbook or put your wallet close by where if somebody has a phone if, if you see somebody in outside and they're going like this with their phone don't think they're making a call because especially if you're real close to them if you're going like this and they're close to you they're scanning to see what you do have pretty scary isn't it we're living in a scary world and it, uh, to me, it's scary because, like I said, I'm not exempt. It's happening to me, too. We cannot trust anyone today. Not even, there was one scam that, that somebody gave me. It was amazing. It's, it's not the answer, not to answer a lot of calls. But you have to watch what even you're calling. There's so many doctors in the Northeast here, right in the Northeast, that went to jail. And they went to jail because they were lying. They weren't even doctors. They weren't even doctors, but they have a lot of places that they're doctors. Graduated. And and what they have, what there's there's such a thing, if, if you have a, a get rid of an RFID wallet blocker. Wallet blocker. Because just in case you're a little bit leery, you're a little bit scared, and you work with a lot of people, get that blocker because that'll block any calls that are going through. But this doctor, some of these doctors are in jail right now, but one of the doctors claimed he was a doctor. He really wasn't, he wasn't a doctor. And what he was doing is he was selling things to the, the he thought one person got wise. One, it's all it takes is one person, one person. One person got wise and said, I don't believe who he is. And they did report him. They said, he's not a doctor. He claims to be. Why is he claiming to be? His reputation. Hello, I'm a doctor. I'm a good person. And this and this and this and this. He's going to get everything he got. Well, they did. He did. He got he got into the person's home, got everything he wanted, and then he left. He left. Now, who do you call for that? If you don't even know his name. He didn't even get the right name. So how would you know? It's pretty scary in the world today, the United States. But how would you know? And some of these people are coming from other countries. As I said, I'm not exempt from this. And then there's, which I found out, there's the, uh, it's interesting, there's the AARP, that's another Ford watch. But there's also, which is interesting, we all go, if you live in Jersey, New Jersey, and you go to these places that read your fortune, right? They're going to read your fortune, and they're on the internet, and what happens when they read your fortune? Well, you, you. They, you think it's great. You think it's great. And you think it's so great, they asked you for your number. They asked you for your number. And you're on the boardwalk. They're giving you everything that you think is true, and it's really not. And as you're doing it, they get your name, their number, and they say to you, well, let me call you back next week, and I'll give you some free readings. But they don't. They don't. What they're trying to do is scam you. It's called Beware of the Boardwalk Psychic Scam. And what they're doing is they're taking a lot of money from the people. And, and this was interesting because here's a woman. She enjoys Atlantic City on the boardwalk with a friend. And a young woman approaches her. The woman introduces herself as Sarah. And often to give her a psychic reading, figures out it would cost her just a few dollars. Well, she took her up to her office and Sarah takes Maureen back to her shop. And during this reading... She picks up all these troubles that she was having, facing her personal life. And having gained this, Sarah often asked various items for sale. She was buying it too. All these items she was selling to solve her problems. Well, she chose the few things with her budget that she could afford, and she starts to leave. But Sarah, not done yet. Not done yet. She's not done from one client collecting money. So she gives her her phone number with an offer to continue to help her effort to her tragedy, what she's going through. It all seems innocent, but the chances encountering with a boardwalk psychic is, is a compliant relationship that will leave you nearly broke. And then the tips, if you are a victim of this kind of scam, 
and you would like to report this scam, the fraud watch, there's fraud watches out there. And you know, this is interesting because there's also many other places that you can report it to, but even that, if, you're, if your line is getting, uh, if people are calling you on your line and they say, well, you can call this number, not the call here again. Uh-uh, uh-uh, even that's a scam. I'm with that. Uh, even that is a scam. It's a scam because once you call it, they're getting these numbers and they're verifying it and they're getting all the information from you. The do not call list, remember that one? The do not call and the, this is where you call, give them your number and people won't call you? Well, they do. They do. Can they stop it? No, they can't stop it. Then would they have, they have what is called a bank account lottery scam. Boy, this is the big one. You're going to get it on your internet. You're going to get it on your telephone. You're going to get it in your email, especially your emails. It's going to say, you have just won. And you're saying, oh my God, I won. So what you do, you open it up, you look at it, and you say, I just won. I just won a lottery. And what you do is they give you a contact person because you won. They're saying, well, you have to pay $500, and then we're going to pay you. 5,000. Well, I mean, everybody believes that. Or some people believe it. I don't, but a lot of people believe it. So you pay the 500 because they give you all this valuable information. And you think it's real. So you mail the 500. But they mail you the 500. Excuse me. They mail you the 500. So you think, how could this be a fraud? They're mailing me money. And then after they mail you the money, they call you. They call you and they say, you know that money I gave you the 500? The check is going to bounce. We gave you the wrong account number. We gave you the wrong thing that you won the money. Can you send that back to us or can you send us a check back for 500, you know, and we'll call it quits and then we'll look into the, the lottery that you did win. Well, you do it. You do it. But you figure out how many people can commit fraud like this? How many people? We're living in an age. How many people? And they do. But what happens, what you do is not only you send them a check to reimburse that 500 that they mailed you, but you're, you're, on their, you're on their hit list. You're on their hit list and they have your bank account. They have everything for you. I'm finding out after doing my investigation, there's only one or two. I don't know why. There's only one or two banks that actually refuse, refuse to do this. Let's, let's take it another step. I'm the scam artist. I'm the scam artist, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to you, give me your check. Give me a, a cashier's check. Give, not even a cashier's check. Give me a check for two hundred dollars. You know, this is what I'm gonna give you. And then I go to your bank. Now your bank is supposed to say, no, I can't cash this because they have it written in here. The only one that's supposed to cash this is the owner, and that is it. But. They don't do that because they're not trained well either. These bankers aren't trained well. So they're going to do whatever you say to make money for their bank. So they cash the check. Now it's a phony check. It's a phony check. Who won? I won. Your bank didn't win because uh, they're going to either lose business. The client's going to just not do it if you report them. Uh, you're the one who went there. You're the one to send this person out. So they can't even say, well, he did it. He, he frauded me. But you're the one that sent him out. And, and you can't do this. You can't say this to your bank because that's their excuse. That is their excuse. So even if you have, and then there's the vacation. I'm telling you, there's so many. The vacations. Many Americans go on vacations every year. It's time to travel. It's time to, and I, I mean, I'm one for that too. So when you receive an email that you're, you got all expenses paid, vacation paid to Hawaii, you have so many doubts. You know what? And it reminds me of something too, which I will tell you. Did you win a sweepstake? Did you do this? Did you fill it out? No, I didn't fill anything for Hawaii, but did I win? And you know what the crazy part is? That happened to me years ago. Didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. Me and a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, we wanted to go to Hawaii. And I get this thing in the mail that I won the trip to Hawaii. And I said, look at this, we won. But I, something inside of me, always go by your gut feeling, go by your gut feeling to say, uh-uh, something's wrong with this picture. And it did. So I did mail to, I did mail, I did mail it, but I didn't mail it to the person. I wanted the name of the company. 
and I send a money order. No checks, no cash, no nothing. But I send it to the point where I wanted to see and get it returned back, and it was. And it was a true vacation that I did win. But I wasn't going to take any chances, any chances when it comes to scammers. They're going to call you, they're going to email you saying they mailed you checks and it was their mistake. Don't do it. And now, if you open up your, if you open up your website, you're going to see a lot, of, a lot of things on there that you're not going to like. And then what you do, years ago, we used to delete them all. Delete, 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 delete. Not today. Because they're tempting today. You just won. Or uh, a check's going to be coming in the mail to you. Or what you filled out, you're going to get. So you, you, you want to believe so bad. You want to believe this so bad. And it's wrong. It's wrong. I want to thank the people out there that wanted me to do a show like this. Because I even learned a lot. I even learned a lot from what they said. And it's interesting. And you know what the crazy part is? The, the biggest scam there is, are you ready for this? My field, bill collectors. That are, bill collectors are like laughter. That's the biggest scams with it. Most of the complaints are under this category, debt collectors. Consumers tell of receiving calls from harassing collectors. And that's a scam too. Another one, fake government. If you receive an email, letter, or phone call from a government agency, typically it's the IRS, or they may say they're from the FBI, and it's instructing you to win Western Union. That you want, they want you to wire Western Union, Western Union. I'm sorry, or to follow a link that enters the information you don't believe it. The United States government will never, never instruct you or anybody to use this method. Remember that the United States government will never tell you to use this method to pay any bill to carry out a financial institution. They will put it in writing to you, and you will get it in writing. You won't get it by email, or you won't get it by a phone call. And you know, even though the government, the government, the president, he signed a bill on this. He did sign a bill. And <laughs> I have to laugh, because even though he signed a bill, I thought, maybe they'll stop. They didn't. They didn't. Not even the phones, not even the emails, not even the... the calls that come in saying they're from your bank, your, your institution, all this is going out. So what I'm telling you to do as a consumer advocate, verify everything. When in doubt, don't. Use your wisdom. Now I'm going to say use your wisdom. Your wisdom is going to tell you more so of the scams that are going on out there and not to believe. Now, are these people good? I think they're, they're really good. They're really good because, as I said, it happened to me. A few of them happened to me, and but I, I won't fall for it. I won't fall for it. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say to me. If I say, well, Pearl, these are the real things. You did win. No. Then you tell me. You know, put it in my hand, but I'm not going to fall for it. Or if I have to go to my bank, which I did one time when they said they were from my bank, and I said, did somebody call from my own bank? They said, no. I said, oh my God, I just got scammed. They said, I hope you didn't say nothing or do anything. I said, no, I didn't. But can't your bank do something? They said, no, they can't do anything, Pearl. It's up to the people. And that's pretty sad because if it's up to the people, you know, it, it's, it's up to you whether people take money from you or not. You have to, you know, in, there's, there's internet hoax laws too. They'll, they'll give you the laws to say, we're for real. These are the laws. It's not the laws. It's called internet hoax laws. And the rise of the internet has also given a rise to new scams to deceive the people. Hoaxes on the internet may be designed to trick people into sending money, credit card information, personal data, and more. Computer users need to be wary of the emails they receive, especially when they ask for personal information, passwords, money, below, and some tips. The tips that I'm going to give you which I seen is trust number one, trust your instincts. Trust your instincts. If somebody doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Check the company's phone number, physical address, and if they don't provide it, beware. Always ask for the check customer reference. If they can't give you a reference, beware. 
Call the state secretary of state and ask if the company is incorporated with them and ask them if they have a current annual report on file. If they don't, be aware. Don't do business with them. Check with the state attorney's general's office to see for any complaints against the company. If they have complaints against the company, beware and make it a point. And then check the National Fraud Information Center. And I will tell you the Fraud Information Center, I mean, if you could go back to this, I mean, I will say it slowly. It's 1-800-876-7060. 1-800-876-7060. That's the National Fraud Information. That's for everything that you see. Because a lot of people will sound, they, you know, if you do something, you do it the right way, you do it the business way of doing it. Use a credit card to pay, but be careful about giving out your credit card number. Often there's a problem. The credit card company may, char may charge back your purchase of the vendor and give you credit. Don't respond to a bulk email that aren't even addressed to you personally. So you have to look at everything you're doing. Is it right? Is this the United States that we were you know, accustomed to? No, it's not. It's not the one I was accustomed to. I never expected, never expected. You know, a lot of people used to say, I know our parents and grandparents used to say, put the money under in your, in your bedroom and, and put it under your bed. And even that you can't because the people will steal it. And then they say, well, you know, watch what you say. You know, there's many people that want, that want their love life there and look what they're doing. They're going on the internet meeting people that will rob them to death. But they are in love. And if that's what they think, they're going to lose a lot of money doing it. So do your homework. Please do your homework when it comes to this. Uh, when it comes to anything, draining your bank account and a lottery scam, when it can't, comes to the boardwalks, the boardwalks itself. But even the AA, now who's at risk more? Senior citizens. Senior citizens are at risk more so. And the reason why they're at risk more so, because they're going to believe people. They are going to believe if you if you call you know it said if you are if your loved one or you suspect a scam, don't let it sit back. Just don't do it. Don't give them any information. I'm going to say don't answer your phone. If you have a personal phone and you know that you don't recognize the caller ID, I mean I have I have a, a private number, and I block all of them. I block everything, and I tell the people, you know what, my friends, I'm saying I'll call you back because I block I block it all, and then. I'm noticing the pattern and the habit. The pattern and the habit is first it'll say gas company, block, electric company, block, uh, IRS, block. Then it'll give, like my personal number starts with 969. Then it'll say 969. I'm saying, oh, do you think they're kidding? A neighbor's calling me? No. Block. If a neighbor wants to get a hold of me, knock on my door. Because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna answer these calls. And then when I see, when I see these same numbers come up over and over again. Now, what happens with the block, though? What is this block? The block is a little machine that I seen because I was going berserk. When people, they, they were doing everything. They were doing everything with with the phone calls. And what happens is when a number comes up, they call me once. Just for, they only have to ring once, and I push the block button, and they can't call again. If they call again, it'll ring once and then go to block, 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 block. And then I look at who's calling. And it's really interesting. It's really interesting because some of these, they're companies. They are companies now, but they're not companies. They're people. They're trying to get you. I also saved this one. Now, this is really, and it's scary. I think it's very scary. As I said, when I, they found out I was doing this show, a lot of the consumers called me, sent me things. This is what one of them sent me. I was appalled by it. I'm thinking, oh my God, what's this world turning to? We all recognize what this is. What it is, it's a pizza. It's a pizza and, and, a, and a steak that you can order. And it comes to your home. It comes to your front door. And you're going to say, oh, I can go for pizza now. I can go for a steak sandwich. I can go for this. I can go for that. So what you do, you call the number on the paper, somebody answers, and you order it. I want to order this, 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 and then they try to talk you into more. First thing to pop up in your head. They try to say, why don't you order, we're having a sale on pizza. You get two, you know, you get the other one for free. If you get two steak sandwiches, you get the other one for free. So they keep on doing it. Then you give them your credit card number. 
bingo, they won. You never, never, never get your food. And then they're out of business. They, they turn the phone off. And once they turn the phone off, all the, all the flyers that they made and printed up, all the flyers that they printed up, this one was mailed to me, but all the flyers that they printed up is no longer in business. Isn't that pretty sad? Pretty sad because now we're getting to, we're getting raw. We're getting raw where, who do we trust? Who do we trust? Uh, we can't trust our, our, our mates. We can't trust our boyfriends. We can't trust our, I haven't heard of a girlfriend doing it yet, but I, you can't trust it because they're after the money. They're trying to get into your home. They're trying to get everything that you have, trying to be nice to you. Then they try to steal from you or they do you favors or they go to the bank for you. But you know, eventually you have to get smart. I was told, I was told just by this night, you have to have wisdom, not be smart. You have to have wisdom. We're living in a world that all this is going on, even the president can't stop it. And the president can't stop it is because it's also coming from other countries. And if it's coming from another country and they're scamming us, who's getting the money? Who's getting the money from this if it's scamming from another country and the, the other country is hiring somebody from this country? But you'll never know because by that time they got their money. And they get their money, but the people were saying, like the woman that committed suicide. All thousands of dollars. And when she went to her bank and the bank said, hey, we can't do nothing about it. We can't, you gave them the information. What, what did they expect her to do? What did they expect her to do? So she committed suicide. And that's pretty sad, but they didn't really advertise it that big. They didn't advertise it that big. They shouldn't have. They should have. They should have advertised it because maybe it'll wake 2,000 more people up. And I'm finding out it's just more people. Or this woman pleaded guilty of defrauding immigrants. How many immigrants come into this country? How many immigrants? Think about it. Thousands. So when they come in, what you do, what they were doing, I see here in the paper, they were opening up an office. And it says, immigrants, if you want us to get you your apartment, your home, come to us. Come to us. We will make sure you get it. And I'm an attorney. They're not doctors anymore, now they're attorneys. And we will make sure you get it. So everybody that walked in there that were immigrants, they trusted them. Naturally, they trusted them, they're not from the United States. They paid them $1,500 per person. And all they did was fill out an application. Think about it, fill out an application. Sounds good, doesn't it? $1,500 for one person. If 10 people went in there, oh my God, look at the money they're making, that's just one day. Or if they had 100 people come in there, $100,000 in a couple days? Well, she got caught because she got greedy. She got greedy. And when I seen this, I was amazed. It says she even posed as an attorney. She was going to pose and say, I'm a doctor, but she didn't know what to do. So she posed as an attorney. And the attorney, she puts a woman who operates on a storefront. She even opened up a storefront. And she deceived federal authorities. And she lived in Jersey. Believe it or not, she lived in Jersey. She did plead guilty because she figured she would get counts of mail fraud and four counts identified theft and get off earlier because she had all this money. The prosecutor said that she posed as an attorney who could help people attempting to get a permanent residence and found a sponsor for their applications. Investigators documents such as instance 215 and 218 and one she hired and helped a mother with her two children obtain personal residence. Pretty sad, pretty sad. And then after this happened, she got too greedy though. Her clients were from foreign countries, unfamiliar with our laws and regulations. And they trusted her, they trusted her to give them targets. And actually she charged them $1,500 to file an application for permanent residency, an additional 500 to provide a sponsor. Unbelievable. Her plea agreement includes $11,000 payments to her victims. She's never gonna pay it. And they know it. However, at times in the process, she took certain actions that were not appropriate. This is how she got caught. She, 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 she scheduled to be sentenced April 30th. April 30th. Well, it's not, April 30th isn't here yet. So let's see. I'm going to do a follow-up on that to see what exactly she gets. Because something like that, I mean, just with foreigners to come in this country, I mean, we're getting screwed already. The Americans are getting screwed already. Can you imagine the people that don't know the laws in this country and what they're doing. In summary, 
you have to you have to watch. You know, I can't. I mean, it's you can't be paranoid with everything. You really can't. But you and you can't be paranoid because you trust God. You believe in God's going to do the right thing for you. But you need wisdom. You need the wisdom, and not just say, "I'm here. I'm getting it for nothing. Give it to me." It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And the two ways of doing it was naturally telephones and emails. Not the regular mail. The regular mail has, it has to have an address or whatever, and that can be documented. The regular mail can be documented. And, and it's pretty sad because a lot of people don't do it. And today's people, hello, I see it myself. People are lazy today. People are lazy. And I see the people are lazy, and I yell and scream at my own clients, do this by this, do this by this, certify this, do this, do this, do this. And they think I'm being strict. I'm not being strict. I'm just trying to protect them because I see what's happening. What am I going to say? Well, this happened to me. And this happened to so-and-so. This happened to everybody out there. No, because then you have to know. So I decided to do a show on this when somebody called me and said, I have to, and then somebody mailed me a letter and said, let me tell you what's going on in this country. It happened to me. I said, put it in writing. And she did. She did. It happens too many times that somebody... And this was the dating website. Her name was Dorothy. She said I could say her name, but I won't say her last name. She began pouring her heart out, pouring her heart out to the 59-year-old, despite, despite never meeting him in person. And during the exchange, the woman started requesting money to support her and her daughter that supports Blossoms into $700,000 over the course of a couple of years. That's pretty sad, isn't it? seven hundred thousand dollars and i know you wouldn't say well i did it because you would think you know you're a fool no people doesn't think you're a fool today and and i wouldn't say that's why i said I, I i'm on the list too because they did it to me with my phone they did it to me too so you don't have to say you don't have to be embarrassed to say well, it won't happen to me i'm so embarrassed they gave him this money i'm so embarrassed because i trusted i'm so embarrassed no we're living in a world I can't say you can't trust people, but you gotta use wisdom. And the wisdom that you need to know is how to protect yourself. Uh, I wrote to the AF, AARP telling them about the seniors, to put it out there with the senior citizens, because the senior citizens of all people, uh, and when somebody calls them and says they owe a bill, they get scared. Or when somebody says, it's gonna be a cop at your door if you don't pay this ASAP, they get scared. Or this is what you need to pay us. Or we're going to report you. They get scared. Now picture your mother or your grandmother getting a letter or getting a call. Like, not a letter. They won't do it by letters. They'll receive an email or a call. But senior citizens don't, don't read their emails, so they're not going to do it. But now they do. The younger people does it. And the middle-aged people does it. But when they say, don't, if don't, don't pick up your phone because it could be the wrong thing. If they And if they sound convincing, if they sound too convincing, yes, you can take their name. They're going to give you a wrong name. Yes, you can take the phone number. They're going to give you a wrong phone number. But tell them not to call you again. Not to call you again. If you do, if they do call you again, you will report them. You're going to report them to every legal agency out there until somebody hits home. Now, when I report, I do report, I have reported a lot of these scams, and I report them to three places. I report them to the Better Business Bureau, the Federal Trade Commission, and you know, and even that, the Federal Trade Commission, I mean, they're on the ball with it, but they can't do everything. They can't do everything. They, can, they, can, they can't even write a scam letter. They can just warn the people. So, you know, they warn me to warn the people. Or the Better Business Bureau, the Better Business, they're only, it's a corporation, it's a company. So how much can they do for the people? So what they do for the people is just advise them, here's what you do, don't believe in everything. They know people aren't going to follow, follow it. I do though, I do, I do send them letters. People today are lazy. They're really lazy. They don't want to follow up on it because they think, oh well, it's already done, I already lost my money. But if you lost thousands of dollars, what would you do? If your bank tells you, I can't give you back the money, now where are you going to put your money back? Maybe our grandparents were right. Maybe our grandparents were right when they said, put the money under your bed. <laughs> Maybe they were right. 
Did you ever think of that? Years ago when they would say, put the money in your bedroom under the bed. And then some would say, well, no, you can't put it under your bed because somebody could rob you. But if you're looking, if you're looking for a bank, I think you have to sit down with them first to say, what do you allow and what don't you allow? And will you ever, ever, ever call me on my phone? They're going to say no. And it then it say, well, if you ever have to send me something, please, regular mail. Regular mail send this to me or I'm not going to answer you. Don't, don't, don't be pleased with your condition because they're losing money too. A lot of banks lost money to people because of what they did. And, and the people that lost money, they learned valuable lessons. I just, I'm distraught with the person that committed suicide all over because no one helped her. No one did anything about it. And you know what? And who, who could she tell? So what I'm going to say is avoid answering emails and ads from unfamiliar sources. If you get a phone and on your caller ID, it's a number related to you. Oh, come on. Don't answer it. Don't think it's important because it's got your first three numbers. Don't answer it. If you get a call that says, oh, well, this is from the IRS, this is from the electric company, don't answer it. If it's that important, they will mail you a letter. They will mail you a bill. They're not going to call you. But you get so scared because this is not our, this is not our society today. Our society today is in, a, is in a generation where we didn't expect all this that was going on. I had to do a show like this because some called me, some emailed me, not emailed me, hello, some actually wrote to me and told me what happened to them, especially the one woman that, that about her boyfriend, that she, he got money from her. And, and I can't say she allowed it, because she didn't allow it. I didn't yell, because I did call her back to say, hey, you know what, I know you didn't give him permission to take out this money, because then he was just gone. Another, another email was, uh, she, met, she met this guy, and he told her, he was giving her everything, giving her everything. And then found out, he, she even, she made dinner for him. He brought her over his house, made dinner for her. Everything was going great. No one thought there was a scheme of somebody's plan. And finally, she finds out, because he told her. He told her at the end. He said, I forgot to tell you. How could you forget? I forgot to tell you I'm still married. Hello? But he tried to get everything away from her from her house. But she didn't fall for it. This one client didn't fall for it. And that's good. So I said, I hope you pass the word around and give this the word up and down. But the two things to remember is when you're out in the public and you're shopping, always keep your phone so secure that no one's beside you. Keep it that no one is beside you so where they can tape, tape your pocketbook, tape your wallet, tape it. I know it's scary, but this is the world we're living in. And, and you know what, you're saying, you know, why, why, why do we live in? Who can we complain to? I don't know who we can complain to. Just the people, I can tell you what to do, what not to do, but you know, it's, the rest is gonna be up to you, it's your choice. It's your choice. If you, I, I gave you all the information, Try to invite your neighbors over your house and play this whole thing again. What to do, what not to do. Because this is what's going to happen. And if you do it, then you can say, hey, I did it. It was my fault. My fault. I allowed it. I allowed it. I won't say that no more because I allowed it too. I allowed it for my bank. I allowed it for many things. And if they say anything, and if they don't forget it, they call the do's and don'ts. Don't answer calls from an unknown number. Unknown number. The FCC recommends you letting it go to voicemail. Don't press any key. Let me repeat that one though. The FCC states, re recommends you letting it go to voicemail and don't press any key. Because when you press any key, they got all your private information and you didn't even know it. They got your home number, they got your account number, they got everything. Just because you pressed the number one or five or six, this is how they got there. And they know they got a right number. So you'll continue to get calls from them. This is, I hope, I hope you learned some lessons today. And I will know. You will call me. You will write to me. And let me know that if, if it saved you from something, I want to know about it. Because I will do a follow-up show on this. Because this irked me with the people we're doing out there and how, how much 
there were thousands and what's not I'm not talking about hundreds of dollars I'm talking about thousands of dollars so if this is you please play it again or if you don't play it again and you remember everything I said when you go outside today go to your bank or go to your store watch what you do watch where your pocketbook is watch where your wallet is and don't let anybody near you I'm not saying to be paranoid because you can't be paranoid, but you got to have wisdom. And if God taught us anything, he wants us to have wisdom. What to do, what not to do. Because he's against these people, but at the same time, these people are getting punished. They are getting punished. One way or another, they're getting punished. I want to thank everybody out there for doing an exciting show like this. Because when they, I was told, I said, i got to do a show on this. i got to do a show on scams. Because it's happening all over the place. It happened to me, personally. So, again, you know, stay tuned uh, for the profile. So, if you have a credit problem, if you have a credit problem, please call my toll free. Not a scam. 1-800-876-CREDIT. Say, Pearl, I have a credit problem. And uh, I'll send it to you. And, and we'll take it from there. Let's clean up your credit. Let's get you where you should be going. And if you want, need a mortgage, I will get you the mortgage. There's a lot of things. A lot of people I'm dealing with now. And they're all legit, all legit, because it's coming from me. You know, I'm a consumer advocate for rights, and, and I will protect you any way I can, any way I can, because it's not right. It's not right what this world's doing to people. I wish there was 2,000 more that were on my team doing the same thing. But anyway, if you have a credit problem, 1-800-876-CREDIT. And ask for me. I will pick up the phone. People are surprised at that, too, when I pick up the phone, but I do. I will answer all your questions. I had a busy week this week because a lot of people wanted their mortgages, refinances, and I answered all their questions. I don't care what time of the day it is or what time of, time of the night it is. So again, this is Pearl Polto. As always, making the most of your credit, giving credit where credit's due. This is Pearl Polto signing off. Thank you.